Okay, so next topic is um, chapter 7, moving beyond linearity. And so far, uh, what we have mostly focused on um, were linear models. So that the response is related to the um, predictors in a linear fashion. Um, trees are not linear. So trees are not considered linear, but uh, beyond trees, um, regularized regression is linear, lasso, ridge, elastic net, these are all linear models. And the linear models are attractive because um, they are simple to describe, to implement, to analyze. We can calculate everything around them and they also, we like them because it's easy in terms of interpretation and inference. Um, the coefficients, the coefficient, the estimated coefficients we get um, are easy to communicate. It's easy to communicate their meaning. Now, the problem with uh, linear regression is uh, that they have limitations. And the major limitation is the linearity assumption. This linearity assumption is almost always just an approximation. And sometimes it's a terrible approximation. So let's look at wage versus age. This is the wage data set. It's available. And um, we see that in the range of 20 to like 30, 40, uh, with age, wage also increases, right? So yes, if, if the data we were considering where it was only limited to age 20 to 30, it might have worked, a linear model might have worked, right? It would have been an approximation, but it might have been reasonable. But if we want to consider this whole range, there is no linear model that, that could have worked because it goes up and it goes down, okay? So when we see that, when we say that um, linear regression is almost always an approximation, this is what we mean. Okay. And even if you're doing lasso, ridge, or elastic net, we're still using a linear model. So in this chapter, um, we would like to relax the linearity assumption while we like to retain uh, as much interpretability as possible. Trees, not trees, but random forest, bagging, boosting, it loses a lot of the interpretability that uh, linear regression methods offer. So in this chapter, we, we relax the linearity assumption and uh, we create simple extensions of linear models. For example, polynomial regression or step function or more sophisticated approaches such as splines, local regression, generalized additive models. We saw splines. I, I show you an example. Uh, before but here we will look at them um, in more depth okay
So polynomial regression extends linear models by just adding simple extra predictors. So we use um, larger powers. Okay, so So instead of having a simple linear model that we have here, we add nonlinearities. Um, xi to the power of 2, xi to the power of 3, xi to the power of d. So this is known as polynomial regression. And um, this example here. Um, the solid blue curve is a degree four polynomial. It's in thousands of dollars as a function of age. And we ha also have the 95% confidence interval around it. Now, just something that is slightly, I mean, it's relevant, but it's a very important point. Why do you think that the confidence interval here is wider than here? Why is it here wider than in the middle? This doesn't have anything. This is a very conceptual question. It's a question that um, you don't need to know much about uh, polynomial regression. Just by looking at the data, you should be able to answer this question. Why is the confidence interval wider here than in the middle why is it wider at the um, at the end at the boundaries Well, the reason is this, the confidence bound, the, the width of the confidence interval is, a, uh, is, is depends on how much data we have. The more data we have, the narrower the confidence band. And in the middle, we have more data. There's more concentration of data points. That's why the confidence band is smaller. And here it becomes wider because we are reaching the, the, the limits, the boundaries of our data, and there, therefore the band is wider. Now, here's the thing again, a very important point, or something that's probably uh, you all know, but this is a confidence interval. It's different from a prediction interval. A confidence interval... Uh, is about the population mean and the population but when it comes to prediction we also have the irreducible error and we see the irreducible error is 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 is, is anywhere from 200 you know in this interval look at this interval so for age of 50 um, we have a, a large variety in wage because uh, what goes into the prediction of wage is just more than age. Okay, so but this is a confidence interval, it's not a prediction interval. Okay, so this is polynomial um, regression. And then we can have a um, piecewise constant. Uh, models
So step functions um, are useful. This is a, what is this? What are we looking at? What is I? I stand I stands for indicator function. I is an indicator function. What goes into it? An X goes into it, and then we have the I of X less than C1, meaning that if X is less than C1, C1 is a constant, then the indicator function is 1. Otherwise, it's 0. So if x is less than c1, this quantity is 1. If it's greater, than c1, it's 0. And that's why we call it also a step function, because there is a step at c1. Now what does this indicator function says? It says if x is between c1 and c2, it's 1. If x is between c2 and c3, it's 1. If x is greater than ck, it's 1. So each of these functions um, have a local behavior. Unlike the polynomial, where uh, each of the degrees x1 x to the power of 1 x to the power of 2 x to the power of 3 uh, had a global structure uh, on the nonlinear function of x here the step functions have a local influence and now you may say how do we decide on these these are the breakpoints c1 c2 c3 um, they are typically predetermined, and that's a big problem because uh, they will have a significant effect on, on, on the shape of the estimate we have. And if you want to use step function, then the estimated coefficients will be the intensity of that step function at that moment. So we have beta 1, beta 2, beta k, and then we add them. And this is our, again, this is formed as a linear regression model. The only thing is that we have transformed our features. So we're just transforming our features. So, so far, uh, moving beyond linearity is just by transforming or features either by having by squaring them and then to the power of three or four or by having these step functions but at the end the formulation the mathematical formulation it's still linear now it's not linear in xi's anymore it's linear in these functions so that's how we go beyond uh, linearity we, but at the end of the day the machinery is still linear regression but what's happening is that the features have been transformed okay And here's an example of what you could get out of this if you use the uh, step function to estimate wage. Again, we have the step, we have the confidence bands, and we see the same phenomena. The confidence interval at this boundary and this boundary is wider than the middle.
Okay. Now, um, just give me one second.